It is just a few days until I start my John Muir Trail through hike in California. I feel like I've been talking about this hike for so long now. I mean, I got my permit for it way back in February. It's now August. Side note, where has the summer gone? I feel like it's barely started and it's already August. But anyway, I feel like I've been talking about this hike forever and now it's here. It's coming. I've been getting all my stuff ready, anxiously watching conditions because of the record snow this year. Apparently there's still some snow out on the trail in August and some of the creek crossings are getting a bit hairy. There are some bridges out this year, so it should be quite the interesting adventure. But I had a request to show you guys the gear that I'm gonna be taking out on the trail. So I figured as I'm packing and getting everything ready, before I actually stuff it all into my backpack, I would show you what I am bringing. So if you watched my Colorado trail series from last summer, a lot of the gear that I'm taking is staying the same, but I have switched out a few items. So some of the stuff is definitely gonna look familiar. My big three have remained the same. But yeah, I had a few items that I had to replace and I am doing the JMT northbound and I'm starting from Horseshoe Meadow. And so that adds on about 20 miles of trail compared to like the traditional JMT starting at Whitney Portal or starting at Happy Isles. I was like, where does this end in the north? Oh yes, Happy Isles in Yosemite. If you take the traditional JMT starting points, you get, I believe, 211 miles. Uh, my hike will be, I think, between 230 and 240. I was a little confused with like the add-on because you have to add on this chunk and then go up Whitney and then come back the way you came. So actually, now that I'm saying this out loud, I think it adds on 30 extra miles and I think in total, my hike is gonna be about, be about 240 miles compared to the normal 211. But the reason I'm doing it that way is because it's a heck of a lot easier to get permits through the Inyo National Forest starting at Horseshoe Meadow than it is to get them by going in through Mount Whitney or by starting in Yosemite. So if you've been trying to get a JMT permit and haven't had any luck, I would highly recommend starting in the Inyo National Forest at Horseshoe Meadow because permits are very easy to come by from that location. It was competitive getting the permits at first, like back in February, but I've been noticing there have been tons of cancellations as you know, summer is now here. Some of that might have to do with the tough conditions out there this year, but I also just kind of think like people's plans change, they cancel, you know, you you get a permit six months in advance and then maybe by the time the hike rolls around, you're like, oh, never mind, I have other things to do. Not me, because you know, it's my favorite thing. But anyway, I will do a logistics video once I've actually been on the JMT and I'll talk about that more in depth. But I just wanted to say, if you're looking for a JMT permit, it's not that hard. Okay, so, oh, but the reason that I brought up where I'm starting is because Starting at this location, we're gonna be doing, we're gonna try to average, me and my friends, about 16 miles a day. That will give us the opportunity to take one zero or two Nero's. We have 16 days to hike the trail. So our first leg is gonna be a bit tough. <laughs> it's gonna be about nine and a half days for us to get from Horseshoe Meadow up to Vermilion Valley Resort, otherwise known as VVR, where we will pick up our first resupply. So we have to carry about nine and a half days of food for that leg. In addition, you are required on the JMT to bring a bear canister. So the bear canister adds weight, and I have never carried nine and a half days of food before. <laughs> I think the my farthest carries before this have been about a week. So this is a little extra, so I'm nervous. So I put in a big effort with the new gear that I had to buy. I, I spent more money than I normally would have to get lightweight gear, like really lightweight gear. 
and I put in a big effort with the food to get lightweight foods. I was really paying attention to how much the foods weigh in terms of, you know, their calories and whatnot. So as I'm going through this, you'll definitely notice like some of my more lightweight choices. And the reason for that is that nine and a half day food carry. We'll have a much easier time once we get to VBR. Our next resupply from there is Red's Meadow. That's just a couple of days away. And then that'll take us to the end of the trail about three and a half days from, three and a half to four days from Red's Meadow. So no big deal there, but this first leg is gonna be tough. So anyway, let's get into my gear choices for my upcoming JMT through hike. And by the way, I'm gonna be doing a series while I am out there. So make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already if you're interested in the John Muir Trail. Here's a quick look at everything before we get into it. This is a long table and it's full and I gotta carry all that on my back. By the way, I weighed my bag today. This is without water bottles and without micro spikes and it came to about 24 pounds. So I anticipate that my starting weight of my pack will be about 29 pounds, which is a few pounds heavier than I'm used to, but not too bad. All right, let's start with the big three. Like I said, this has not changed since the Colorado Trail last summer. I have a Western Mountaineering Ultralight 20 degree down sleeping bag. Ooh. I have a Gossamer Gear Mariposa 60 liter backpack. And I have a Z-Pax Pleximid one person tent made of DCF. For my sleep system, in addition to my sleeping bag, I have a Nemo Tensor sleeping pad. I took this pad out on the Colorado Trail last summer and it immediately got a hole in it. So I was not feeling super faithful about the pad, but it is the most comfortable pad I've ever used. So I traded it in at REI and got a new one. I hope this one holds up better. I've used it a couple of times this summer and I still love it. I still love it. So I hope it works out. Wish me luck. I have a Thermarest blow up pillow and then i'll move on to the clothes from here oh wait i forgot one thing about sleeping i have a sea to summit sleeping bag liner this is a mix of cotton and silk i really like this because i don't like to having to wash my sleeping bag very often because it is down so this helps keep everything clean and i'm a cold sleeper so it keeps me a little bit warmer as well okay for the clothes i heard the trail's pretty wet out there because of all the melting snow so usually usually i'd only bring two pairs of socks but i'm gonna bring three one specifically a pair of fuzzy socks for sleeping and then two pairs of darn tufts for hiking i'm gonna be wearing i think this tank top from old navy these patagonia shorts one sports bra, one head one buff headband to keep all my frizzies back in my hair out of my way. And this is something new I got. This is an outdoor research sun shirt. I was wearing an REI brand one last summer. I really liked it, but it wasn't the coolest sun shirt out there. And it's also gotten like pretty stained because it's light pink. So I decided to try a new one. This is Outdoor Research and it feels a lot lighter than that one I had from REI. So I'm, I'm pumped to try this out. I just got it, I haven't even tried it out yet, but this is Outdoor Research. And my sleep clothes, these are new. Um, these are just lightweight base layers from REI. They were on sale, so I decided to try them out. So lightweight base layer top, that's a half zip. And then matching pants. These are, I just kind of was using before a Melly and some joggers from Old Navy, but I, this is like one of those things I wanted to save a few ounces on. I've been wanting to get some sleep clothes anyway. So these ones are pretty lightweight. I think the top is like five ounces and the bottoms are six ounces, somewhere around there. So. A little bit lighter than what I had before. I hope that I like them, we'll see. In terms of rain gear, this is another thing that I got new. I really needed some new rain pants. I've had mine since the AT and they've gotten a lot of use. 
and um, they were really wearing out like on the leg as I like try to pull my leg all the way up here, don't mind me. <laughs> um, they were really wearing out at, at the bottom of one of the legs, so I wanted to get some new ones. So I paid a bit of a pretty penny for these Z-Pax Virtus rain pants. These are crazy light. I wanna say they're like three ounces. I can feel a huge difference from my old rain pants. My old ones were Columbia. And these just, it's like holding nothing. They're crazy light. They make my raincoat feel really heavy actually. So same raincoat that I've had. This is a Marmot Precip. I really like this raincoat. It's not as waterproof as it used to be. I would kind of like to get one for some upcoming trips. I'm gonna be doing the Wonderland Trail in the fall in Washington State. And I'm gonna be doing the O Circuit in Patagonia later this year. And both of those places have the potential for decent amounts of rain. So I would like to get a new rain jacket, but I haven't seen one yet that I think really fits the bill for me. And I really want a good color too. So if you have a favorite rain jacket for that's ultra light that you like to take out backpacking, let me know down in the comments. I like to use it both for rain and for wind protection, a little bit of extra warmth sometimes. So anyway, but I think this is only like eight ounces or something, but compared to those new z rain pants, it really does feel heavy. <laughs> okay, onward. I got a new puffy this year too, but that's just because mine was kind of wearing out. Like a lot of the stuffing was coming out. I've worn it a ton. I always wear it for it's like hiking, skiing, everyday wear. So it's really gotten a lot of use. So I decided to treat myself and I got a new puffy a couple months ago. It's the same one I had, just a different color. It's the Patagonia Micro Puff. I, I've got a purple theme going for this hike. I got a lot, last year for my Colorado trail, I had a lot of pink. This year I have a lot of purple, but I love the color of this jacket. So this is the Patagonia Micro Puff. Really loved my other one of these. So I have no doubt I'll love this one as well. I got a couple of new dry bags. One is for my clothes and one is for my sleeping bag. These are also from z -Packs and they're also insanely light. Oh, and I have underwear in this one too. I figured you guys don't need to see that, but it's in there. <laughs> oh, and my uh, my kit in case my sleeping pad springs a leak. But yeah, these are crazy light. They're under one ounce. So I one of my Sea to Summit dry bags leaked last summer, so I needed to replace that one anyway. And I was like, this is another place where I could shave a few ounces normally probably wouldn't spend the money to shave just a few ounces but like i said i'm kind of desperate because of this nine and a half day food haul so there we are black diamond headlamp black diamond trekking poles you guys know i don't go anywhere without my trekking poles I actually recently lost a pair of my trekking poles and had to replace them it was very sad I'm still having the slightest idea where they ran off to got my lighter and this is a California wild uh, California fire permit so if you are going to have a campfire or even use a cooking stove in the state of California in many places you got to get a campfire permit it's free you just have to take a little quiz online to get it but you have to bring a physical copy with you does anyone check I have no idea but I'd rather be safe than sorry and you know follow the rules so there's no question like I said it was free For my cooking setup, I have my long-handled titanium spork, my MSR titanium pot, my pocket rocket, which I usually bring the case for, but I was like, nope, gotta save weight. And then I also have a titanium mug. This one is from Tokes. And you might be like, couldn't you cut out your cup if you're trying to save weight? Um, no, I can't because I like to bring pour over coffees and you can't pour over from the same pot. You know what I mean? Like you need two things. So that's a little bit of a luxury item, I guess, but I'm such a coffee girl that I need it. I need it. I'm not doing pour overs every single day. Usually I would, but I like the copper cow ones and they have these creamer packets with them that are delicious, but they're kind of heavy. So that is one area where I'm sacrificing. I'm only bringing a few days of the pour overs and then some Trader Joe's like dry coffees, which are fine. They're just not as good. 
It'll be fine. Ugh. This is an area where I spent a lot of money. Um, I have not owned a bear can. I've always been able to get around using a bear can. I usually use an Ursac but you can't use an Ursac in the Sierra. They're pretty serious about it, I guess. They make you bring a bear can and you can only bring certain ones that have to be approved. So this is my Barricade Weekender bear can. And it cost me a pretty penny, but it's uh, carbon fiber and it's just under two pounds. So that's not too bad for a bear can. I've used much, much worse. This is full to the brim right now. I fit almost all of my food in there. There are just a few things I couldn't fit, but I think after the first day of eating, I will be able to fit everything. The only things I can't fit are these two ramens, some goldfish, and one peak refuel meal. And I also have to get like three bagel thins. So after I eat my thing, I'm gonna eat all the bulkiest stuff first, I think, and then hopefully I can all fit it in the bear can. Moving on, gotta bring my hat, of course. A lot of sun out there. So in terms of electronics, I have a big boy anchor rechargeable battery and I actually got a small one to go with it as well because when I was in the Collegiate West on the Colorado Trail, I almost ran out of battery. That was, I wanna say that was like six days maybe, six and a half days. And I came close to running out of battery. I'm really scared of running out of battery because as you guys know, I'm gonna be filming out there. So I got this little extra one too. So I hope those things combine, it lasts. I have my outlet from Anchor to charge things along with my cords. I have my earphones. I have a mini med kit. My wallet with a couple of quarters in there to open my bear can. I have, I have no idea how much TP I'm going to need for nine and a half days. So I have a lot better safe than sorry. Ibex always runs out. So surely she's going to come begging for some by the end of this nine and a half days, along with my titanium trowel. And then I wear contacts. So I got my contact stuff and a pair of old glasses. I actually just got some new ones from Warby Parker, but they haven't arrived yet. Some, um, you know, face wipes. And if you notice, also in my contact bag, there's two dice. That's because we like to play Farkle out in the wilderness. So me, Ibex, and Dory, you guys know them if you watch my Colorado Trail videos, we all are bringing two dice so that we can play Farkle. I've got my selfie stick and my tripod for my filming. I've got my sunscreen. Everything's in bags because of the plane. And Luco tape. Like I said, I heard the trail's pretty wet, so I'm a little worried about getting blisters. So that is why I'm bringing the Luco tape. Do they make smaller rolls of these? I would like to know because this is the roll that I have, but it is quite big and a little bit heavy. Deodorant. I know I'm a weirdo. Most people don't wear it when they backpack, but I like to wear it, so. Bug spray, I heard the mosquitoes are pretty brutal out there. Wish me luck. Bathing suit, lightweight towel, because you just never know when a swimming, swimming up is gonna come up. I got my gaiters to keep dust out of my shoes. I have my Garmin InReach Mini. And... I think, oh, my Kula cloth as well. Toothbrush, toothpaste, and floss. I have my Sawyer Squeeze water filter with my, what are these bags called? Oh no, I'm gonna have to open it up and look. Been using these things forever. I should really know what they're called. Ever new, ever new bags. Two, two liter ever new bags. And then I cut off the bottom of a smart water bottle to use as a cup if I ever need to just scoop it. If the water's not running, I don't think that's going to be a problem on the JMT, but you never know. I'll also be bringing two smart water bottles, but I'm going to pick, up, pick those up in Reno when I get there, I think. 
Oh, and a couple of carabiners to hang stuff off my pack, like my hat if I'm not wearing it, my shoes, whatever. And I think I got everything except for, I bought this Sea to Summit bag. It's only like 2.5 ounces. It's a 20 liter. So I bought this to take on the plane because usually in my pack, I put a lot of stuff on the outside of the pack, right? But I'm not gonna be able to do that for when it's, I have to check my pack on the plane. So I got this to put all of that stuff that I normally put outside of my pack inside of this and I'm gonna carry it on the plane. But this is super lightweight. This is another one of those things that's like, I wouldn't have paid the money for this, but I couldn't think of a better solution. So that's what it is. But I'll also, I'll use this for Patagonia as well. So, and probably the Wonderland Trail as well. So no big deal, but it was like 45 bucks for this little bag, which I'm like, well, probably not worth the money, but desperate, so. Oh, and then one thing I did forget was my camp shoes. So these are just Tevas. Um, I know there are lighter weight camp shoes out there, but I anticipate I'm gonna be using these not just for camp, but also to be crossing streams i did think about getting some lighter camp shoes but when it came down to it i was like these are really supportive i know that they stay on my feet i've worn these in some pretty swift water crossings before with no issues so it just seemed like it was worth maybe a little bit of extra weight to bring these and then of course i'll have my hiking boots which are in my car right now and one thing i did forget is i'm going to be bringing my katula micro spikes as well but those are also in my car at the moment and I haven't gone down to grab them, so. Oh, also mini med kit, I don't know if I said that. And a full size wet brush because I tried a mini wet brush on the Colorado Trail last year. It was an absolute freaking disaster. Couldn't get it through my hair. It got malformed so quickly. It was just an absolute disaster and caused me a lot of stress because I am very, uh, my hair does not cooperate. <laughs> it's like wavy, curly and thick and coarse. And um, if you don't have thick, coarse, wavy, curly hair, you can't imagine what it's like. It, it's, it can be real finicky. But anyway, I think that is all the stuff. I don't think I forgot to show you guys anything. So yeah, that's my gear for the JMT. Wish me luck, I'm really excited. I, I've been thinking about the JMT for a while, but I haven't wanted to pull the trigger on it because I do wanna hike the Pacific Crest Trail and the trails do overlap for 170 miles, but I don't know when I'll get out on the PCT. So finally I was like, you know what? I wanna go hike the JMT. I'm just gonna go do it. So here I go pretty soon. Uh, wish me luck that I don't get swept away in a stream. Um, <laughs> anyway, like I said, should be, should be a great adventure. So, oh, and I will be filming. I don't know if I'll be able to edit. Usually I edit in my tent at night, so I'm able to get the videos out pretty quickly, but because I'm going to be trying to make my battery on my phone and my battery packs last for that nine and a half days, I don't know that I'll be able to do that. And I also, I will not have cell phone service really out there. I've heard there's basically no cell phone service on the JMT. I do expect to get Wi-Fi at VBR and maybe Red's Meadow, but I don't know how strong it's gonna be. So basically what I'm saying is, if you don't hear from me for a couple weeks, it's because I haven't had any Wi-Fi or haven't been able to edit my videos, but I will get to it as soon as I can. I can't wait to share this journey with you guys. So yeah, wish me luck and I'll talk to you soon.